Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our Tuesday night live broadcast. So if you joined us last week, last week we talked about the evolution of loose skin. Last week we talked about, you know, one of what was one of my greatest fears when it came to weight loss was having loose skin when I got to the end of it. And so many times when I'm working with clients, it's one of their greatest fears as well. They're like, Carmen, oh my goodness, what's going to happen if I get to the end of this weight loss journey and I have all this loose skin? <laughs> and so tonight, I'm going to tell you about some things that I did to help reduce or minimize loose skin. And so before we jump in, uh, make sure tonight while you're watching, take a second, smash that like button. It takes a minute and it really helps out the channel. And I wanna invite you to join our growing community here on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button, ringing the notification bell, and that way you won't miss any of our tips, strategies, healthy recipes, all of the things. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. So let me just say, picking up from where we left off last week, where we talked about the evolution of loose skin and where we talked about the fact, which I will link that down below in the description box. If you missed week one, you'll be able to go back and watch that and catch up where you, where we left off and all of that. And so when you're losing, when you're losing weight, when it comes to your skin, things get worse before they get better. And you know, your skin's going to go through an evolution of going from hard to saggy. But when you're done losing the weight and you get rid of all the fluff, then what you're going to be left with is like bone and muscle and skin. And so when you start losing weight, you start off with hard fat and then it gets squishy and soft. But then when you, if you go all the way, like I was morbidly obese, I didn't stop at obese. I didn't stop at overweight. I went all the way from morbidly obese all the way down to a fit, healthy, trim body. And so even though I had extra skin on my stomach, even though I had extra skin in my arms and in my legs, at that point in time, if you pressed on my stomach, it was hard because it was skin and muscle. There was no extra fluff there. And I can even remember when I went in for my plastic surgery um, consultation for my tummy tuck, which I'll talk about in a minute here, it, it came with like free liposuction. And I don't know, like I'm kind of a bargain kind of girl. So I wanted to get all the bang for my buck. And I'm like, all right, so what are you going to lipo? <laughs> like it comes with liposuction. What are we going to lipo? And I can remember the, the surgeon was like, um, there's really nothing to lipo. You're really, you're fit, Carmen. And so there's nothing to lipo. I was like, oh, come on. And I can remember leaving and telling my husband, can you believe he said there's nothing to lipo? Like, he, there's got to be something that he can lipo. My husband was like, what's wrong with you? He's like, that is a good thing, Carmen. It means you've done your job and that is a good thing. And I was like, oh, okay, well, all right then. And so let's go ahead and dive right into some of the things you can do to reduce the loose skin. And the first thing, the first one I'm going to start off with is one of the ones that I believe in the most. And what that is, is strength training, working out. When you lose weight and you see pictures of people who've lost a lot of weight and they don't have any fitness in their life. And then you see pictures of people that have also lost weight that have regular fitness routines, regular fitness regimens that they do. The person with fitness in their life, the person that is building lean muscle, the person that is moving, always, I have never seen an exception to this rule. There might be an exception because there's always an exception, but I haven't personally seen one. The person who is working out, the person who's moving their body 30 minutes a day, six days a week, the person who's living an active lifestyle has a better finished product than the person who's just losing weight. And this is one of the biggest reasons, there's a ton of reasons why I advocate for fitness. There's a ton of reasons why I think everybody on the planet should move their body 30 minutes a day, six days a week. There's a lot of reasons. But one of the biggest reasons is if you're losing weight, it is going to drastically reduce the amount of loose skin. Because as you're building lean muscle, it's giving that skin something to hold on to. It's making that, it's, it's just going to help tremendously with the loose skin without getting into a big old fat science lesson. And so work out 30 minutes a day, six days a week. 30 minutes a day is seriously 2% of your day. That is it. And, you know, there's a bunch of other health benefits on top of loose skin, but it's 2% of your day. That is it. And that is one of my top tips for reducing loose skin is living an active lifestyle and working out, whether it's, you know, lifting weights, 
mixed with some cardio, mixed with some yoga, mixed with whatever it is. Just move your body 30 minutes a day, be intentional about it, and you will see your loose skin be reduced just by doing that. The second one is hydration, being hydrated. When you are dehydrated, your skin is dehydrated. And when your skin is dehydrated, it doesn't have as much elasticity. It's not as forgiving. It's all of those things. And so simply by staying hydrated, you are going to help the elasticity of your skin. And when you increase the elasticity, you know, that's like when you pull on a rubber band and it snaps back. Well, that's kind of like your skin, right? So the more elasticity it has, you ever, you ever went to play with like a dry rotted rubber band and you go to pull it and it like, it's all like cracky and crumbly and it doesn't have any elasticity because it's gotten dried out. It's lost the moisture inside of the rubber. Same thing happens with your body. And so if you can keep your body moisturized from the inside out, because when you drink water, you're moisturizing it from the inside out, you're keeping it hydrated. And that's just going to help tremendously with loose skin. I personally drink one gallon of water every single day, which is 127 fluid ounces. But at the very minimum, you should be drinking half of your body weight in water every day. So for, so for simple math purposes, if you weigh 200 pounds, that's 100 fluid ounces of water that you should be drinking every single day. That's going to keep you hydrated from the inside out. All right. Third thing is to stay hydrated from the outside in. So hydration is really important when it comes to your skin's elasticity. So by drinking the water, you're hydrating from the inside out. Now we're going to work on hydrating from the outside, which is going to be your lotions. It's going to be all of those things that you're going to put on your body. So any kind of lotion, cocoa butter, aloe, uh, you know, all those things. It doesn't have to be some, you know, studies have shown a lot of these high priced bougie lotions aren't that much better than the cheaper lotions. And so I used to take a mixture of coconut oil and in the mornings, coconut oil and um, cocoa butter or, you know, like the big tall thing of like Queen Helene's <laughs> $1.99 Walmart lotion. I used to take some of that with some coconut oil, mix it together and just rub it all over my body. And I would do that every single day when I got out of the shower. Uh, yeah. And it just became like my ritual. It became what I did. And yeah, so moisturizing from the outside in. A balanced diet, a balanced diet. Nutrition plays a big part in how healthy you are. And so no, I don't recommend cutting out carbs. No, I don't recommend cutting out, I don't recommend cutting out anything. I recommend that you eat a balanced diet. Your, our bodies were made to eat a balanced diet. And when you're eating a balanced diet, that's going to help keep your skin healthy. It's gonna help you be healthy. And when you're healthy, your skin is healthy. So often, you know, I used to have a lot of problems with my skin. I used to have problems with bumps on my skin and irritation all over my skin. And as soon as I lost the weight, that all went away. And so most skin problems are, uh, a lot of them are induced by being unhealthy, by having a lack of something in your diet. And for me, I don't know what that lack was, but I can tell you when I started eating a balanced diet, I definitely had my skin completely improved. All my skin issues went away. Um, We talked about working out. Massages. Oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> Massages. So, and this can even be you massaging your own arms, you going and getting a massage. Yes, it's relaxing. Yes, it's good for your your inner self, your peace, your zen, your whatevers. However, it also increases circulation in your skin. And when you increase circulation, you increase healing, you increase elasticity, and all of those things. And I actually really learned, I've always been a massage lover, but after I had plastic surgery and I had my stomach done and my chest done, one of the things that the doctor's office gives you is several massages in the basement of their you know, their practice, they had a whole massage area and you got like three free massages with your surgery and then you could pay for more as well. And they would actually massage the scars on your body because it promoted healing. It helped you heal faster. And sometimes, yes, it was tender and sometimes, you know, but it, 
they would just rub vitamin E oil in, vitamin E oil and lotion into those areas, um, vitamin E oil a lot. And I was like, wow, like, why do you guys do this? And they're like, well, because it helps you heal. It promotes circulation. And I was like, oh, really? So massage is like really good for me, huh? Can you say that to my husband? <laughs> No, he's always supported me getting massages. But my point is, massages are good for circulation and just overall health as well. All right. Uh, sun exposure actually hurts healing. Sun exposure. So if you're really trying to reduce your loose skin, use sunscreen when you're outside. Don't be laying out all the time, especially, you know, right after you're losing weight. Sun exposure will actually hurt the your skin bouncing back, then it will help. Think about, again, a rubber band. If you leave a rubber band inside, it's gonna last much longer than if you leave a rubber band outside baking in the sunlight. One's gonna be a better rubber band, more elasticity. The other one's gonna start to lose its elasticity faster. And so just be aware of the sun. And if you are in the sun, protect yourself uh, from that. When I was, after my surgery, one of the things they said was if you're gonna have your scars if you're going to have your, your, any of the scars that you have in the sun, make sure they have sunscreen on them because if they're, if they get, if they're visible to the sun, that can actually cause them to not heal as well. I was like, oh, so there you go. Salt and sugar scrubs. And you can make these. I think, I think sometime this year, I'm going to do a video here on YouTube where we actually make them. I make my own. They're super easy to do. There's all different kinds, and I've made a lot of them over the years. They actually make really good gifts, and so I don't know. Maybe we'll do that one of these one of these evenings. We'll get on here on one of our Tuesday nights, and I'll show you how to make some of those scrubs. Super easy to do. You can put them in a jar with a ribbon, give it away for a present. Anyway, and it's a really great way when you when you're using the sugar or the salt scrubs, you rub it on your body, and that's going to help increase circulation. It's going to help promote healthy cell growth, getting off the dead skin, all of that stuff. And so sugar and salt scrubs are really, really great. And until we do that video, let me know in the comments, is that something you want to see us do? Do you want me to get on here and show you my four or five favorite ones? Um, and they're much cheaper to make them yourself than to go buy them. If you buy them, they're actually, they can be pretty expensive, but to make them, they're pretty inexpensive and they really do work. They really do work very nicely. So all right. The other thing that I did in the evenings, so I did my lotion and my coconut oil in the mornings. And then in the evenings, I would take either vitamin E oil and lavender, or I would take castor oil, lav lavender, and vitamin E oil and mix them together. But most of the time it was vitamin E oil with some lavender. And I would take the vitamin E oil, the lavender, and I would mix it together and I would rub that on those areas that I had the loose skin. And so I was moisturizing my body in the morning. I was moisturizing my body in the evening and it was keeping my body moisturized. I was drinking my water. I was using my sugar and salt scrubs. I was eating a healthy diet. I was working out. And what I will tell you is at the very end, what I was left with even before surgery was after a year of doing these things, I didn't have a ton of loose skin not what I was expected, not what I had seen in pictures. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of loose skin can also be genetic. Some people have better skin than others. But at the end of the day, when I was all done with that year, I gave myself a year after I was done losing weight. I said, all right, I'm going to give myself a year. And after that year, I'm going to assess my body and I'm going to see if there's any areas that you know, I would want a surgeon to help me look better. And if, if, if they, if I do, then great. They have plastic surgeons. And if I don't, if that's not a priority to me, that's fine too. And so after that year looking at my body, I already knew from a very young age that these were going to be a problem someday. I had seen mothers <laughs> who had breastfed their babies and I saw what it did to their woman area, their chest area, especially larger breasted people, which I was. And I already knew at some point I'm going to have to hire somebody to fix this if I want them to look, you know, the way I wanted them to look again. And so, you know, I looked in the mirror and it was like, okay, I'm going to pay a doctor to fix this. And I went in and had uh, a breast lift, a breast implant done to fill them back up. Because when you get a breast lift, they cut. And I explain all that. And I have a whole playlist where I talk about the surgeries I had done 
I'll link that in the description box as well. We go through the cost, the recovery, all those things. But when you get a breast lift, they cut the skin. And so if you don't get an implant put back in your, your chest, your boobs end up a lot smaller than what they were because they have to cut the skin to lift it up. And so they gave me a breast lift, they put, a, they put an implant in and they did a tummy tuck. And then a couple months later, I went back in and had a, a leg lift, a thigh lift, I think is what they call it. But at the end of the day, if I never would have had that done, I would have been okay. It would have been okay. I was still in a size two. I still love my body. But in one year, my skin improved so much just by doing these things, which cost very, very little to do. And at the end of the day, it really, you have to be patient. Rome was not built in a day. And I would never recommend anybody go get plastic surgery right after you're done losing weight. What I always tell my clients is when you're done losing weight, when you get to your goal, wait a year. Give your body a year because your body is going to shift and change and there's no reason for you to go spend money on something that you didn't need to spend money on when your body might do it naturally. And so I would always tell anybody, and I know when you get done losing weight, you're like, you want to wear all the things. You want to look as good as you can. Is I get it. But give yourself a year. Do these things that I just talked about. And at the end of that, you look in the mirror and if you decide, hey, yeah, I still want this done, then you go knock yourself out. You go do whatever makes you happy at that point. But try these things first. And if you do these things, I guarantee it's gonna help some. I guarantee it's going, it's gonna help. And so I will also link, I know somebody's gonna ask um, my favorite vitamin E oil and all of that the the things that I did use that you can get on Amazon, <laughs> I'll put those links down below so that you know what vitamin E I used and all, all of the things that I, any of the things that I talked about that I got on Amazon, I'll link them down below. So, you know, one of the things I didn't do is people always told me about this, but I, I, I always read that celebrities did it, but I've never done it. Have you ever tried using hemorrhoid cream and saran wrap? That's one of the things, it's a temporary fix, but evidently it restricts your capillaries. And so a lot of celebrities will do it before they're going into like a photo shoot for a bikini or whatever. They'll take hemorrhoid cream and they'll rub it on their stomach and they'll like wrap their stomach really tight in saran wrap and then they take it off and their stomach is like contracted or something. I don't know why I had a note down here because of that, but <laughs> anyone ever done that? I've never done that. But while you're going through this, while you're losing weight, after you're done losing weight, take pictures. Because when you're looking in the mirror, it's really easy to look in the mirror and remind yourself of how far you haven't come. It's really easy to look in the mirror and look at the trouble spots. It's really easy to look in the mirror and be like, oh man, look at that loose skin. But if you take pictures and you document this, then what you're gonna start to see is you're gonna start to see your progress. And you're gonna start to see, wow, the skin is tightening up. Wow, my waist is getting smaller. Wow, look at that muscle that's there this week that wasn't there last week. Uh, you're gonna start to see progression. You're gonna start to see progress. You're gonna see your body changing because if you don't take photos, you see yourself every day. So you don't see those little changes as they're happening because you just see yourself every day. So, you know, so anyway, yeah. Those are my top tips for getting rid of loose skin. Just making sure I didn't miss any, but no, I got them all. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out those videos that are linked in the description box. Smash that like button before you leave. And we will be back next week with some Q and A. Many of you have had some questions, lots of questions that have come in over the past couple months. And I'm going to take Tuesday, next Tuesday night to answer those questions. So you and me, I'll be answering those questions live here on at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.